Good morning, YouTubers and Weavers. Well, when I did the uh, end of the shawl video, or not shawl, I said that last time too, the scarf video, the wool scarf, a couple days ago, I showed you just real quickly on the Ashford Loo, and I'm sitting right next to it, it's right there, um, that there's a very small, narrow, white warp that's on there and I said I got about three or four inches done which I have. What I'm doing is a sample piece. Um, years ago I did a couple fairly simple pieces using summer and winter and in fact I'm going to show you my very first summer and winter project which was well over ten years ago before I started doing YouTube videos and it was just a little teeny runner for Christmas and here's what it looks like so you can see it there or you can see it on the other side it looks like that and you can see we'll bring it in a little bit closer you can see a little more, more that way anyways I did that following the directions to do summer and winter as they're written up in Deb Chandler's book Learning to Weave. And in that book it basically gives you what I have since learned is called alternating summer, alternating weave for summer and winter. I have seen other people do summer and winter and it looked different. And I went back to um, the H Shaft Strickler book, and she's got a section there about summer and winter, and she shows you different ways to do it, but didn't 100% make sense to me. So I did a little bit more online research, and I found an online article in Weave Zine about summer and winter to Tequet. I probably didn't pronounce that right. There's the article. I've got it in plastic. Okay. And I'll try and find the link to this and put it down there below in the description. But in this article by Lillian Whipple from March 12th of 2009 she walks you through a couple different ways of doing summer and winter to get slight variations in the way the, the summer and winter looks. Now she suggests using um, common sewing thread and making a bookmark that's going to give you a piece about an inch wide and a very fine looking pattern. But I wanted to be able to see my pattern a little better. So I'm using the um, El Cheapo Peaches and Cream Cotton from Walmart to do this, but I'm following the pattern that she set up for the little one inch wide bookmark. So that's enough of this rambling. I'm going to aim the camera down and just show you where I'm very beginning to do this. Um, Again, the reason I'm doing it so big is I want to be able to see what the pattern looks like, not just uh, end up with a bookmark. So let's take a look at what I've got. Yeah, you're on. Okay, so we just went through with three and eight. One, three and eight. So I'm going to be doing this, remember you alternate tabby with pattern in these blocks. So my tabby or plain weave is in white. So we'll do that. And then pattern block is going to be in red, or a pattern thread I should say. It's going to be in red. There's that. Then I'm going to go for a tabby. 
Now you'll notice again I'm doing this on the table loom instead of my floor loom partly because this is just small and narrow but partly because it's a direct tie up and I can come up with more combinations than if I were using a treadle. One, three. So and I'm marking things off. I printed out a lift plan for this little chunk that I'm doing. I will show it to you now. There's my lift plan. As I do a section to mark off what I did, I mark it in yellow with a magic marker or a highlighter. And you can see the red and white, red and white. That's to tell me which, whether I'm doing uh, the tabby or the pattern. And I'm just doing this and I'm doing this in what she calls summer and winter alternates. So I'm doing that and when I get to doing some of the other combinations of summer and winter, things like duck a gang or bird's eye, she also calls it O, or well here's a polychrome where she wants to use two different colors of pattern along with the single white tabby and here's the taquette, taquette I can't pronounce anything that even looks remotely French. But you get the idea. There's alternate ways of doing this. And I've got draw drawdowns, lift plans for each of them. So this is what I'm doing. And what I want to do is just see the differences in the way each of these methods of doing summer and winter turn out. When I get farther along and can show you how each of them work on here, I will come back and show you a bit more in this video. Okay YouTube, I'm going to do a set of four threads in the alternating method. Basically the way I learned it out of Deb Chandler's Learning to Weave book. But I'm only going to do it in just one little section in the middle of this warp. So first we go through with the white a tabby thread or plain weave. And then I'm going to go through with a, I did that backwards. There, a pattern thread. So you can see the pattern is right there in the middle. Then we'll do a tabby going the other way. And the pattern going the other way. For a group of four threads. That's how I learned originally to do summer and winter. Always in sets of four threads. So now I'm going to do that again and get two sets, two blocks of this alternating method. I know you can't see the levers I'm flipping. It's because I want you to concentrate on seeing 
what the pattern looks like. That was a mistake. Pretend you didn't see that. I will unweave it. And there you go. You can see, I hope, the first thread is a little bit longer on top, then this is a little shorter. And this is a little longer than this is a little shorter. So that's two sets, four threads each, of this method. So now let's frame that with some other colors. Now, there's my alternating. I've just done some everything of background for a little ways. Now we're going to do the what she calls the O or the bird's eye. So we'll start with our tabby going across first. Then we'll do the first of our pattern shots. Now we'll do our tabby going back that way. And then our pattern shot going back. Now Here's where it begins different. You noticed here I did two sets of the same thing. Now instead of doing just four threads and repeating those four threads exactly the same way, I'm going to repeat them, but I'm going to reverse the sequence of how I do the pattern shots. So we're going to go with a tabby coming like this. That's the same, nothing different. But now we do our pattern, our, our first pattern of our second group, and I'm running out of thread on my bobbin. But we've got enough to get this done. And then we'll go for tabby. Then pattern. And without a bobbin because I'm almost out of thread. So we'll just put it through by hand. Now can you see the difference? This effectively had long, short, long, short with a little tie in the middle. This has short, long long short. And the reason it's called an O or a bird's eye is because effectively you've got this sort of roundish bit right there. But to make this the block has to be eight threads long instead of two sets of four threads long. It's still two sets but you're, to make that O shape you really need eight threads. Now I'm going to do the X shape of this little guy. So we'll start out again with our 
plain weave or tabby, depending on whose book you read, they want they want to call it. There's that one. Now we'll do the first of our pattern threads. And again, this is two sets of four threads or one set of eight threads. Back to Tabby going the other way. Second batch of four, or continuation with thread five of set pattern going for the thread five. Tabby going back. Pattern going back. Okay. Can you see here I've got the slightly longer one than the short than the short than the long of the pattern, whereas here I've got this O, here I've got an X. Okay? I know this is small and subtle. And I've got the camera zoomed in about the best I can and still have a proper angle on it so you can see it. But I'm hopefully hoping you can see the difference between these. And it's this bit of going from just a four thread group to an eight thread group that I didn't understand by just reading Deb Chandler's book. And Strickler's HF book talked about it, but it didn't make sense. Deb Chandler talked about it, talked about using what she called pairs. But there's no way it made any sense to me when I first learned it. So that's um, the first three of those. I'm going to go on and do the Duca Gang, or however you pronounce that. And we'll see what that looks like in a second. And this is going to be this Duca Gang method. So again, we start with our tabby, or our plain weave, whatever you want to call it. And then we go like this. And then we go to our other tabby. And then we go with our pattern. And now to our heavy. And pattern. Now it strikes me that this one could be done a different way and still probably qualify. So I'm going to weave just a section of the one time of this sort of oneness in between and try this, the alternate method that. Uh, comes to mind. And let's see what that difference is. And I think this will qualify as the game. Okay, 
coming up to the second variation of Duke Gang. I'm probably thoroughly mispronouncing that. I think it's a Swedish word. There we are. I didn't see in the paper that I've got on this that there was a great deal of difference other than this. These both qualify, I think, as this Duke gang. Um, again, you look, each one of these is a slightly different arrangement of the pattern block of summer winter. When I'm all done and get this off the loom, I'll try and show you this stuff from the back, too. Because it obviously looks completely different. Because everywhere where we're seeing a lot of white here, on the back we're seeing a lot of red. And where we're seeing red here, on the back we're seeing white. Now I'm going to do the final method that she shows in this paper that I got online, called Tequet. Again, just as I couldn't properly pronounce Duke Gang, which I think is in Swedish, Tequet, I'm guessing, is in French. It's spelled T-A-Q, I'll start over again, T-A-Q-U-E-T-E, -E. Tequet, well, guess at pronunciation. So, we're going to start off, and it's not a tabby now, it's just half of the tabby. So we're starting with just that, that and then we will go to our pattern. And then we'll go to our non-tabby, tabby, whatever you want to call it, this way. And then pattern again. And honestly, I'm not seeing much. We'll find out. So, non tabby. Oh, maybe I did it wrong. Let's see. No, I think I did it right. I don't see much in this one. You can catch a little bit of extra red there, but I'm just not seeing it. Maybe it'll be better on the other side. We'll know when we get there. But that's the ticket. Maybe if I had a wider group. Again, I don't know. But I wanted to see what it looked like in a single pattern right down the middle. So, I'm going to play around a little bit more just to fill things in and then we'll take this off the loom and see what the back looks like.
Well, YouTubers, this uh, little experimental summer and winter project is done. Um, I know many people, and even I did this, I did summer winter very early on, one of the first weaves I did, well, first other than plain weave and twill. And um, I probably should have understood how it worked many, many years ago. I just didn't bother. So that's what this little sampler experiment thing was all about. You can see now that I've taken it off the loom um, what I was making was little heart shapes in each of the variations of summer and winter and there's those little examples I showed you and then this isn't a heart shape, but that's that tequet or whatever, however you pronounce that. Okay, so now let's look at all this same stuff from the other side of the piece of weaving. Just so you get an idea. And I, I labeled these. So this is using that alternate method. This is also using that alternate method. It's just that I did it as an outline instead of a solid heart. Then the next one is the bird's eye method. And bird's eye. Next is the X method. There's a my little experimental pieces. This I think was alternate. Bird's eye, X, um, Duca Gang, and here was the little disaster that I did, the Tequet. I think I made a mistake with that. So we'll ignore that one. And then here's that Tequet method again. So Anyways, what's going to become of this thing? It's not, it's not going to be used for anything other than a reference for me of what the different kinds of summer and winter patterns can look like. It's not a useful piece of cloth for anything else except that. But for that purpose, it's a good reference for me. So. That's it for this video. Um, I don't know what's next, but whatever it is, I'll tell you about it when I figure it out. Until uh, the next time around on my video camera and YouTube, bye bye.